What is up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to my kitchen. It's a new year, 2022. A lot of people have New Year's resolutions they're trying to accomplish. And the biggest New Year's resolution that is made in the United States is simply losing a little bit of weight. I feel like a lot of people look at it the wrong way. They think they just gotta join a gym. They start working out a little bit and they're gonna lose weight. But I'm here to tell you folks, the most important part when it comes to achieving that goal of weight loss, maybe you wanna build a little muscle, it is all dictated by the food you're eating. But there's no reason that we gotta give up foods we love in order to see results. You don't gotta eat bird food. And today with this recipe, I'm gonna show you just how easy it is. In today's video, we'll be making anabolic Philly cheesesteak sloppy joes. Not only is this a delicious twist on a standard sloppy joe, we were able to pack it with so much protein and so much flavor that you could literally fake out someone coming over and they'd have no idea that this recipe was actually good for them. We can whip this up in about 15 minutes and I'm telling you, that's gonna be some of the best 15 minutes you've ever spent. If you're tired of doing fad diet after fad diet, eating foods you don't enjoy, maybe getting results in the short term, but in the long term, you're falling short, then how about you try the anabolic diet with these recipes? You can find my cookbook at the first link in the description box. And it has every recipe on this channel broken down in an easy to use guide to fit right in your pocket. And the best part is when I drop a video like this one, a new video, the cookbook gets updated for free. So this recipe is now in there. So if you're watching these videos, you're like, darn, that looks good. You don't have to pull the video up in Walmart to see what you need to buy. You just pull this out. The recipe's in there. You know everything you got to do, what to weigh out, macros, calories, everything. It's a steal. And I 100% believe that if your goal is weight loss this New Year's and you have this book and you follow us in here, it's gonna be the easiest and best diet you've ever done. Mark my words, link in description. All right, ladies and gentlemen, if y'all are ready to get another epic video underway, then as always, man, I'm here to do it for you. Let's do it! Yeah! We're gonna begin by grabbing a couple green bell peppers and a yellow onion. Now the first thing we're gonna do is dice up our sweet onion. I'm just gonna make a vertical cut right down the center through the root and split this thing in half. And then a little pro tip to get this skin on the outside off that I like to do, instead of just peeling it off, cause I can be a little tedious, I'll just go here on the onion, grab the outer layer and peel it off this way. That'll save you a lot of time and headache. And now that, that skin's off, all I'm gonna do is make some vertical slices right along our onion. I'm trying to keep them relatively thin thin, but honestly, you can have your onions be whatever size you want. And then once we've done those slices, we're just gonna turn it. We're gonna chop the root off the end of each side. And all I'm gonna do now is go in and make little strips the same size as before. And as you can see, those onions are nice and diced. And then next up, we got our green bell peppers. These are really easy. Just take your knife, go about a half inch from the end, cut that off, switch sides, do the same thing. And then now we just wanna get this core out of here. So I just take my knife, go around the outsides, dislodge it. And once you've done that, you should be able to just grab and pull out the core. And at this point, I'll just cut it in half. Put that half on its side. We're gonna do the same thing, just make some long strips. And then once I have those strips, I'll just go in and make more strips lengthwise until all of my peppers are diced up. So we have all of our peppers and onions diced up. What I've done is weighed out 84 grams of each one in a small bowl that we're gonna set off to the side for the greater recipe. Now you might be looking at this and wondering what you do with these leftovers. And what I recommend is buying some cheap reusable food storage containers. You can get these on Amazon, I believe. They're linked in my description box under my kitchen gear. We can just take these and toss them in here so we can use them later. Having these already diced up and on hand will make this recipe a pinch to whip up again later. Now that we got the peppers and onions done, we're gonna move on to our second crucial ingredient. What we're gonna need is a can of beef broth. What we're gonna do is weigh out 240 grams of roughly one cup in a small bowl or measuring cup. And then to the beef broth, we're gonna add about 10 grams of cornstarch. That's gonna help this sauce thicken up and give this the perfect Philly cheesesteak texture. And after it's in here, I'm gonna go in, stir everything together. And then once I see the broth get a little cloudy, I'm gonna set it off to the side. And then the final ingredient we need to prep out is a combination of two sauces to help add some flavor. We're gonna start with 15 grams of Worcestershire sauce. We'll just weigh this out in a small bowl. This is crucial to get that Philly cheesesteak flavor that we want. And then next, we're gonna add about 60 grams of our G Hughes sugar-free ketchup. If you're buying ketchup, this is the brand you should be using. And then finally, I'm gonna add about a gram of salt and a gram of plain old black pepper. And then just like the cornstarch and broth, we're just gonna stir everything together, let it all incorporate, and once it's done, off to the side. 
And when it comes to our last two ingredients, we need to be very selective with these. We don't wanna use regular ground beef. This has got a load of fat and tons of extra calories. Instead, we're gonna be using 96% lean ground beef. We get more protein, less calories, same hamburger flavor that way. And the same thing applies to the cheese. Not using regular full fat cheese, that's where we get in trouble. Instead, we're using fat-free mozzarella, which contains no fat, has way less calories, and quite a bit of protein. So of all the ingredients in this, make sure you're using these and make them a staple in everything you make moving forward. And now it is time for everything to come together. We got a large scale up, I'm gonna hit it with nonstick. Then what I'm gonna do is crank the heat up and start by cooking my ground beef and giving it a good sear. And then once we got the ground beef cooked and it's a little charred, we're gonna put it on a plate. And then once we got it all here, we're gonna take the pan right back to the stove. And at this point, the rest comes together like clockwork. We're gonna take the green peppers and onions, toss them down in. And I'm gonna let the peppers and onions cook for about two to three minutes. I want them to soften, I want them to get a little color, soak up some of that residual hamburger flavor in the pan. And once these are looking good, next step. At this point, these are perfect. They smell amazing, they have the color I want. We're gonna add back in the beef, and we're also gonna add in our ketchup sauce mixture, along with the beef broth and cornstarch. Now what I'm gonna do is go in, stir everything together, get it all incorporated. Make sure we do a good job here mixing everything together. That way all the flavors are evenly dispersed. And at this point, you may notice it's a little watery, which is exactly what we want. That cornstarch is gonna slowly cause our sauce to thicken up and really become something magical. So all we're gonna do is wait here about every 60 seconds or so, I'll stir it. You can already see it is beginning to thicken up. So I'll do this for about two to three more minutes until we have the desired texture. And at that point, it's go time. After a few minutes, you can tell it is thickened up and has that perfect sloppy joe consistency. So what we wanna do now, we remove it from the heat and we're gonna take our 224 grams of fat-free mozzarella, pour it in, and now we just go in and incorporate it with our meat. We're just gonna slowly work it in. There's enough residual heat in the Philly mixture that this cheese is slowly gonna start melting and combine perfectly into this recipe. At this point, all that's left to do is place our Philly cheesesteak mixture on some buns. Oh baby. And keep in mind, I'm using 130 calorie potato rolls for this, but really this recipe is versatile. The mixture alone is great to throw in with some rice, throw it on a lower calorie sub bun, really whatever it is you wanna do. And here she is, folks. I present to you the anabolic Philly cheesesteak Sloppy Joe. My favorite part about this recipe, besides it being so easy to put together, is how much flavor we can pack in every single bite. We got everything that makes a regular Philly cheesesteak shine. We got the onions, the peppers, the beef, the cheese, everything, but we've modified it to fit on a sandwich and actually be a food that will do our body some good. Seriously, you give this one a shot, I know you're gonna come back and thank me. If you guys could do me a solid by hitting that thumbs up button, that would mean the world to me. YouTube content is getting more competitive and that like button means more now than it ever has. So if you can hit that for me, no matter what you're doing, where you are, you pause the video and just tap that for me, that means the world, seriously. But anyways guys, before this gets cold, let's give her a go. All right, guys, it is time to enjoy the fruits of our labor. But first, the two new revamped flavors of Anabar, the milk chocolate PB&J and the white chocolate cinnamon toast crunch will be going live January 27th. I don't have an exact time yet, but set a reminder on your phone because as always, we're probably gonna sell out. But if you need a protein bar, regardless, it is just like these recipes and these foods that taste amazing, doesn't even feel like you're dieting, then I'm telling you, Anabar is your best bet. Finalbossformance.com, code RGF10 will save you 10%. And keep in mind, if you're busy, these make the perfect on the road snack. You're gonna love them. All right, let's get down to business. I'm gonna grab this one in the middle that I've had my eyes on. Check me out. You guys already know what we're getting into. Let's give her a go. Three, two, one, let go. Mmm. Mm, mm. Guys, the amount of flavor we are able to pack in to this Sloppy Joe recipe is insane. It literally tastes like the Philly cheesesteak I used to get at Penn Station back before I cared about dieting, except it's uh, on a sandwich and good for me. 
Mm. The onions, the green peppers, the cheese, the sauce blend with the cornstarch, it all comes together and it creates something that you're gonna love eating. Now in just the mixture alone before you add any buns, what we have for the entire thing is 978 calories, 18 grams of fat, 167 grams of protein, only 40 grams of carbs with three grams of fiber. So that filling is about as anabolic as it gets. So you can really add that to whatever you want. Use it as a topping on a low carb pizza you're trying to make. Throw it in a low carb wrap, whatever. Do what I did, get a lower calorie potato roll, toss it on there, the sky's the limit. Now with this recipe, I would say for me, I'd get about six sandwiches out of it. So if we factor in these potato rolls, along with the entire mixture, what we have for all six sandwiches is 1,818 calories, only 30 grams of fat, 209 grams of protein, 178 grams of carbs with 15 grams of fiber. That makes each sandwich roughly 300 calories with about 35 grams of protein. Now, the thing is, you compare that to the alternative, regular sloppy joes, whatever, you're gonna have way more calories, less protein, and overall, it's not doing your body good. That's why I always say, follow this channel, just make these recipes instead of what you were making, learn to get in that kitchen, cook a little bit, and if you just start eating this way and you don't even get too crazy with tracking or trying to be super strict, you just start eating this way, it's gonna make a difference, I guarantee it. And boom, we're at the end of our second slide. Sloppy Joe. Let's put her away. Mm, for real, this recipe is incredible. Make it for dinner, make it for your family. Make it for yourself and then meal prep the rest of the mixture. Whatever you decide to do, I know you won't regret it. And as always, if you have my cookbook, it has been updated, so go grab your updated copy because this recipe is now in there. If you're trying to have the most successful New Year's resolution that you've ever had, I really believe if you get this book and you follow us in here, it's gonna basically be like doing this whole thing on easy mode. Link in description if you wanna check it out. As always, guys, I appreciate you. Smash that thumbs up button for me. Like I said, that's the most helpful thing any of you guys can do comment down below do you have any recipes you want to see me make what's your new year's resolution put it down below speak it into existence subscribe if you're not subscribed and until next time ladies and gentlemen i'll just say one of you at the next video see you guys boom 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 baby why not